Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here again in the house of the Lord on the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Then we will be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Thank you, Father. So we are here with our Shabbat service tonight. And we're just going to praise the Lord. Amen. Lift him up and give him the glory and thank him that we have... Um, able to be here together to worship him. And we pray that he just moves this night, amen, in our hearts and our homes, wherever you're at. And uh, this is Bethel Temple Fellowship, and we are coming to you from <clears throat> Jefferson, Texas. And we are waiting for the time to get back in the synagogue. Um, of course, they're repairing it, and they did say that hopefully that we'll be able to get back in there, so that's what we're hoping to pray for, to be able to get back in there. So it's been a blessing since we did get in there um, last year. Um, everything was just, to me and to us, it was a really historical because it was the first time in almost, what was it, 100, 100 years where the synagogue that was created to worship God was open because the Lord uh, put us there so that we could open it up and we started having Shabbat services and we had the feast and it was beautiful because the community did come together and we were together in believing and worshiping God in, in his house. So we're praying and believing that in the name of Yeshua. Amen? Okay, yeah. so let's go ahead and we are going to start with our, our service. And Brother Hunter is going to come and blow the shofar, which we uh, blow it. There's different reasons, but one of them is to assemble. It says to assemble together to be able to worship the Lord. It's the call to gather together to worship Yeshua. together again to everybody, the community, families, gather together to worship the Lord because the end of time is really soon. Amen. Thank you, Father. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to light the candles, symbolizing that we're inviting Yeshua. He's the light of the world. And in the darkness, there's only light. The light rounds out the darkness, and that is our God, Yeshua. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to light the Shabbat candles. Amen. 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 And we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the, uh, the sh we're going to pray for the peace of uh, Jerusalem. Adonai, we come to you now through your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Lord, and we pray for your shalom to be upon the holy city of Jerusalem. We pray that, Lord God, in the north and the south, in the east and the west of the entire area, with Sisrael, we pray that your shalom would be throughout the land. Upon the people, Lord God, both Jews, Arabs, Lord God, the Druze, Lord God, those who have come from far and wide, Lord God, to live in the land of promise, Lord we ask in the name of Yeshua that your shalom would be upon them. If they do not know you, Yeshua, as their Mashiach, Lord God, whether they cry out at the wailing walls at, at the hotel, Lord God, whether they are crying out in the synagogues, Lord, Yeshua, reveal yourself to them, Lord. Let them have a revelation of your shalom, Yeshua. And we pray especially for your peace to be on the holy city of Yerushalayim, according to your Torah, which says, Shalom, Shalom. Jerusalem, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. And also for our nation. Heavenly Father, we come before you. I thank you, Lord. You're going to knock me down. Another prayer for America the beautiful. Trust in me this morning. Show them the goodness of God and the power of God. 
that they will turn to you wholeheartedly, Lord. Recognize that you are the Savior, you are the healer, you are the provider. Lord, pray for America, that America will just totally turn back to you who they have lost. And Lord Jesus, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will touch America once again. And I hope we'll be there to you. In the name of pray. Amen. Amen. And I want to, we, we pray for Jefferson. And I want to go ahead and pray for Jefferson today. And I want to thank all those who made it possible for us to be able to be in the city hall. And I thank God that he opened that door and he used you. Some people may not even know that they were used, but they were used of God to open that door for us. And so we want to pray for the city of Jefferson. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Father, for touching the city, Father God. Let your Ruach Hakadesh flow in this place, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for breaking bondages, Lord God, and holds, Father. Lord, we ask that you call your people back, Father God. Let your voice be heard, Father. Draw them to you, Father God. We thank you, Yeshua, as your Holy Spirit just moves right now, convicting. Of all of us, dear Heavenly Father, to return, Lord God. Lord God, the prodigal will come back home, Father. We pray, Lord God, that you bring the prodigal home, Father. We thank you again that you have opened the doors, and we continue to pray that you will continue to open the doors, that we can bring, uh, just bring your word, Father, that your people will come back to you. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's do the Shema. Shuma in Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Elechad, Baru Shem Kevo, Makutu
this worship. You're worthy. We need you more.
They may want to hurt themselves. I mean, this is just something that the Lord just placed in my heart right now. There's, let's just pray for them that you would have no, know, know that God has loves you and He has the answer for you. He has the victory for you if you give your life to Him. See, He doesn't give us death; He gives us life. Dear Heavenly Father, we come against that suicidal spirit in the name of Yeshua. We command it to leave those that are. Um, contemplating on hurting themselves and suicide. You're a liar. You command you to leave in the name of Yeshua. Life is worth living because of Yeshua. And we live and move in Him. Thank you, Father, for life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for life, Lord God. We have, you said you give us life and you give it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Thank you. There is worth in living. Just because you live, Father. Hallelujah. Life is worth living. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That there's nothing too hard for you, Father. That you are God of love and forgiving. There's nothing that we've done that you will not forgive, Lord God. Except blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is rejecting you. Lord, those that are calling to you, asking for help and repenting, Lord, let them come to you now, Lord. In your name, Father God. Let them hear you calling their name. Let them hear you calling their name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, if you're calling L, Lord God, let them hear your voice, Lord God. Instead of just saying, come to me, come to me. Hallelujah. If you're calling Aaron, Lord God, let them know and hear your voice and he comes to you, Father God. Mary, you hear Mary, Lord God, that she comes to you, Father, knowing that there's hope and life in you. And there's shalom and peace in you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you as you called Adam, Lord God. You said, Adam, Adam, where are you? You were calling Adam back to you, Father God. As your word goes out, as people hear your voice calling them, as you're calling them back to you to let them know that you want to redeem them, love them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Nothing can bind them because it's broke through the blood of Yeshua. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We're here to worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. When the Spirit of the Lord is moving, just continue to love him and accept what he has. Amen. So we're going to go into our, our tour portion today. And it is, let, let the car go forth yourself, for yourself. That's the title. It's Genesis 12, 1 through 17, and then 17 through 27. Isaiah 40, 27 through 41 and 16. The, the that was, I'm sorry, that was the hot tour. And now the Brit Hanashah is Romans 4, 1 through 25. Galatians 4, 21 uh, through 5, and then chapter 5 through verse 1, and then Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. So Brother Hunter is going to help us here, and he's going to read the Torah portion. And again, I hope and pray if it hasn't been read that you go back and read it, and not because there's just so much in it. We just can't even cover it all. My whole entire lifetime, I won't be able to cover it all. Um, so we're going to read a little here, and we might jump around a little bit. So I'm going to ask Brother Hunter if he can read Genesis and the Torah portion, chapter 12, and we'll read that all the way to. Um, let's go to verse 9, and then um, Mike can back for so now, so. Now, Abraham said to Abram, 
Get yourself out of your country, away from your kinsmen and away from your father's house. And go to the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. And I will make your name great. And you are to be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse anyone who curses you. And by you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram went, as Adonai had said to him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai, his brother's son Lot, and all their possessions which they had accumulated, as well as the people they had acquired in Haran. Then they set out for the land of Canaan and entered the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the gate through the land to the place called Shechem, to the oak of Moreh. The Canaani were, in the, were then in the land. Adonai appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants, Hebrew, the Zerah to your seed, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to Adonai, who had appeared to him. He left that place and went to the hill east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel to the west and I to the east. He built an altar there and called on the name of Adonai. Then Abram traveled on, continuing toward the Gath. Sometime later, the word of Adonai came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your protector. Your reward will be very great. Abram replied, Adonai God, what good will your gifts be to me if I continue childless? And Eliezer from Damasek inherits my possessions? You haven't given me a child. Abram continued, So someone born in my house will be my heir. But the word of Adonai came to him. This man will not be your heir, no. Your heir will be a child from your own body. Then he brought him outside and said, Look up at the sky. Count the stars, if you can count them. Your descendants will be that many. He believed in Adonai, and he credited it to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am Adonai, who brought you out from ur Kastim to give you this land as your possession. He replied, Adonai God, how am I to know that I will possess it? He answered him, Bring me a three-year-old cow, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these, cut the animals in two, and placed the pieces opposite each other, but he didn't cut the birds in half. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was about to set, a deep sleep fell on Abram. Horror and great darkness came over him. And Adonai said to Abram, Know this for certain, your descendants will be foreigners in a land that is not theirs. They will be slaves and held in oppression there four hundred years. But I will also judge that nation, the one that makes them slaves. Afterwards, they will leave with many possessions. As for you, you will join your ancestors in peace and be buried at a good old age. Only in the fourth generation will your descendants come back here, because only then will the Emori be right for punishment. After the sun had set and there was thick darkness, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared which passed between these animal parts. That day, Adonai made a covenant with Abram. I have given this land to your descendants. From the body of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates River. The territory of the Kini, the Kinesi, the Kadmoni, the Hitti, the Pirzi, the Rephaim, the Amori, the Kinaani, the Gergeshi, and the Yubusi. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Liz, I wanted to get some of that in there because what I'm going to go over. But it's powerful. So Adonai, we see that Adonai called Abraham and told him to leave his country. How many of us would do that? How many of us would do that if God told us to? So he said, leave your country, his people, and to leave his people, to leave his father's house, and to go to the land that God would show him. So he's leaving everything, everything that he was familiar with, everybody that he knew and that he loved. Abraham would start a new life with Yahweh as his father. 
So now we spoke to Abraham. So it was Abraham who went forth himself. He spoke to Abraham. So it was Abraham who heard him and went forth for himself through faith and obedience to God. So he said, go and he went. Um, just a, a little testimony here. When I got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and uh, got married, God took me away from my home, from my family, from my state. And really, I been back there once to live and that was it. God told me to go. He told me to leave. And not just that, but the friends I had at that time before I actually gave my life to the Lord, I knew that there had to be something better in life. I had friends that were getting beat up by their boyfriends and uh, one of them had got shot in his head because of the drugs. And I'm like, oh God, there's got to be something better than this. Something better than this in life. And it would just hurt my heart that I would see them get hurt. And I said, no, God, you've got to have something better. I said, I, there's something better for me. And as I turned to the Lord, you know, he started working in my heart and teaching me his ways. And, and I had to have something better. I didn't want that. Oh, we sang that song. Um, I want to go back to that old life. I don't want to go back to those old things that I knew. And God had to take me out of that environment. And I had a change of heart. It's hard to leave when you're bound to something, when you're used to it. But God said, no, go. And I uh, ended up in Bible College, and that's where I met my husband. Mm -hmm. Bible College, I don't know how, because I wasn't even in that mode to go there for sure. And anyway, God brought me out, praise the Lord. So Abraham, God told him he was not to fear. God was with him. And those who blessed him, they were going to be blessed. And those who cursed him, but they would be cursed. They bring, basically bring it on yourself. Abraham had a calling on his life, as we all do. When Adonai spoke to Abraham, he obeyed. He obeyed God. See, Abraham was a man of faith. He was a doer. The Bible says, faith without works is what? Dead. So as a believer in Yeshua, we are called out from the things of this world, separated from anything that would hold us back from fulfilling God's purpose in our life. So we have to also lift the high. We have to go forth for ourselves. See, nobody else can do this for you. When you hear from God, you have to be responsive to God. You've got to answer the call. So it may be that you have to leave your country, your family, your friends, because there is a divine calling from God in your life and you can't break through it until you leave those old things behind and so when we hear him say go we need to say yes but we have to say yes in faith and in what action we have to do I, I want everybody to get that we must go forth for ourselves having faith in God which means now listen we have to Faith and work together. And this means that if God's calling you and you don't do the works, but you say, I have faith, listen, you can pray, you can cry, you can fast, and you can say, yes, God, yes, God. But if you don't do it, you are deceiving yourself. The Bible says that you are only hearers of the word and not doers. What does it say? You deceive yourself. What kind of faith is that? Faith without works is dead. James 2, 14 and 16. Faith without works is what? Dead. dead. What is dead? Think about it. What is dead? It, it's not saying faith without works is sleeping. It's not saying faith without works is waiting or, or come to a halt to a stop. It says faith without works is dead. Dead in Hebrew, the Hebrew word is moose. And it means to die, to kill, one executed. Death is no life. There's no movement. It's death. There's no breath. There's no breath of God in it. How can one say they have faith if it is dead? The works of faith make faith come alive. And if we're looking for another word to interpret death, there's not. It's dead. It's just dead. So if you want to be alive in Yeshua, be a doer, obedient to what he says. 
If you put off and ignore what he says, you're not going to go forth and you're not going to prosper because your faith is what? Dead. If he says go, then go. If your faith is dead, how are you going to grow in the spiritual realm and be an overcomer like he tells us to be? Faith without works is dead. Yahweh said in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know my plans I have in mind for you, says Adonai. Plans for well-being, not for bad things, so that you can have hope and a future. He knows the plans that he has for us, but how are we going to fulfill them if we're not doers of it, of it what he says? Yahweh has great plan for Abraham. He had great plans for Abraham and his family. And they did it. They walked out of faith and worked. They worked their uh, obedience. And they received it by faith and action. So if you desire God's plan to work out for you and your family, you have to put your faith to work. Do. Go. Put it to work. Just don't talk the talk. Walk the walk. So when we're stepping out of faith, we must not do that. But we have to continue fulfilling each step forward in faith on the narrow road in the work of Yeshua. Yeah, there's going to be trials. There's going to be tribulations. You're going to get beat up by people talking about you uh, because you're doing what God's told you. When I started out on the road and had my kids on homeschooling and um, people were saying, you're wrong. You can't be out there. You need to be home. Your husband is the one that needs to be out there. You need to be home with the kids. They don't have a home of their own. They don't have uh, toys of their own. You're wrong. That's not what God wants for you. You can't protect your kids by putting them in homeschool. That's what they told me. But I thank God that today I did do what God told me. And I, they went with us and they got part of the ministry. They became involved in the ministry. And thank God he protected them from some of the things that were out there. Yes, he did protect them. Although you can't shelter them in certain areas because this is the world. You have these things coming against you. But they had the foundation. Amen? They had the foundation of the Lord. So when these things did come at them, they knew how to fight against them. I remember uh, Lynette, when she was like 12, 13, I don't know, she went to a friend's party. And she called me every half hour and said, I don't feel right. Is this right? Is this wrong? And she kept calling and calling. I said, well, okay, Lynette, if you want to come home, I will pick you up. <laughs> but she was, God was showing her what is right and what is wrong to be able to do what he's told her to do. So bring them up in the ways of the Lord. I mean, there will be trials. There will be persecutions. And we're going to encounter famines, droughts, physical and spiritually. Yeshua says, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have shalom. You're going to have shalom. In the world you shall have tribulation. But he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So the tangible encounter with man and man-made laws and rules from governments and ungodly leaders, it leads to persecution. But the Bible says these come from lustful flesh and inclined to hear the voice of the evil one. James 4, 1 through 3 says, Wars and fights come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members. So no matter, hallelujah, no matter what happens, Yeshua says, don't fear. Yeshua tells us, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yeshua says, do not fear, Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ. It, it is our faith in Christ and doing all things through him. It is our faith and works together in obeying and doing all things through his strength. So Abraham went through all these things in life and encountered them just like we do and more. Yet he had the victory through his faith in action in Adonai. We must remember, again, what? Faith without works is dead. So he had the victory through faith and works and through obedience. If we, if those who are, if those who call themselves a believer and aren't going to obey, why even go to the place of worship? 
or say that you're a believer because faith without works is dead. Faith is works doing through obedience. Amen? So again, we can pray, we can fast, we can cry and say you have faith, but you have to take action in your faith, again, through obedience in our life. And then some of us will say, well, I, I prayed, I cried, I fasted all day, and I have, and I have faith. But nothing's happening. We cried, we prayed, we fasted, but we're not endure. The Apostle James, if you say this and you say, but I have all this faith, the Apostle James would disagree with you. He would say, he would say to you, well, that's not true. James 2.18 says, but someone will say that you have faith and I have actions. Show me this faith of yours without the actions, and I will show you my faith by my actions. So he, and then he goes on to say, you believe that God is one, good for you. Good for you, the demons believe it too. And that through, I mean, this is God's word. Hallelujah. He goes, you believe that God is one, that's good for you. The demons believe it too. The thought of God makes them shudder the fear. So you see, through action, the faith is made complete. James 2.22. Hallelujah. I, you know, I, I just want to read that again. I run into the several, and including myself, you know, when you go through these stages and God checks you. And I said, I did everything. I have this faith. I have this faith in God. But yet you're still sitting there. I have faith in God. I have faith in God. Going nowhere, doing nothing, saying, not doing anything. And so James is this big preacher, and you tell him that. And he says, um, I disagree with you. That's not true. Because this is what he says. But someone will say to you that you have faith and I have actions. One has faith, one has actions. He said, show me this faith of yours without the actions. Huh, see? And I will show you my faith by my actions. There you go. Faith and, faith and works go together. Hallelujah. God told Abraham, go. Abraham had faith, and he went. Amen? He didn't even know he was going, but he was willing to go and believe and trust Yeshua. So it also makes... Um, the word of God is powerful, amen? Thank you, Father. Um, faith comes together, it works together, rather, with your works of obedience and living a holy life because you will speak God's word and they have to obey the command of God. Demons have to obey the name of God. This go jump to Abraham meets Melchizedek, the king of Salem. Salem means peace. I think y'all know most of this here. Now, Chesedic brought out bread and wine. What is the bread and wine? It's the, commun the communion. So Abraham seen a head in faith, and he acted on his faith in Adonai. He was partaking in the covenant of Messiah. Messiah is the priest of the Most High. Yeshua is a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So he blessed Abraham, and Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. And I just want to remind you, just a reminder, the biblical Salem is Jerusalem. This is where they met, where it took place. Psalms 76, 2. His tent is in Salem. His dwelling place in Zion. And also, it's also known as um, the, the King's Valley, Genesis 14, 17. So after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. And I'm, you know, reading this, and I feel like God is telling us, fear not. I am your shield. Your reward. Fear not in well-doing. Your reward shall be very great. 
The latter is greater than the first. This is the word of the Lord for us tonight. So don't get weary in well-doing. Don't give up. Move yeah. on. Keep going. Standing on the word of God. He's the rock. Yeah. Yeah. Two nine says, the glory of this new house will be surpassed. That of the old, says Adonai. Mm. And in this place, I will grant the shalom, says Adonai. He says his glory will fall and be greater. Don't give up. Don't give up because of all this stuff going on around us and sickness and all of a sudden, don't give up. Right. He said the glory of this new house will surpass that of the old. His glory, hallelujah, will fall and it will be greater. We believe and we have faith, but we have to put that into action. Faith. We have to put that into action and worship. If we want the power of the Lord to fall. If we want the lad to be better. We've got to worship him. we got to serve him. we got to love him. Worship him. Love him with all of our heart. He's given us this promise. And we can't suggest to him to do something different to fulfill it. When his ways and thoughts are much higher than ours, sometimes we have these different thoughts. We think this way, we think that that way. We say, well, that's how his glory is going to fall. But he desires worship, amen? That? Obedience right. and faith in him. That, right. his, that his glory will fall. His Shekinah will fall. He said the glory, hallelujah, of the new house will be greater. Thank you, Father. And we don't, we can't make excuses and suggest this is why it didn't happen and that's why it didn't happen. No. God is to be worshipped. We need to worship him in spirit and in truth. Worship him in obedience because his glory causes his glory to fall. And the desire that we have for him. Revelations 4.11 Worthy are you, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things. Let's just say that. Hallelujah. Everybody say it together. Worthy. Worthy are you. Hallelujah. Our Lord and God. Our Lord and God. Let's say it again. Worthy are you, our Lord and God. To receive glory and honor. To receive glory and honor. And power. For you created all things. For you created all things. Hallelujah. Worthy are you, Father. Worthy are you, Father. Worthy are you, Father. Hallelujah. Genesis 15, 7 and 8. And God tells Abram, I am the Lord who brought you out from earth to give you this land to possess. And he tells us the same thing. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the pit, out of the sin, the sin out of darkness. I brought you out to possess my promises, to possess life in the new uh, kingdom, life in the new promised land, in the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He says, I am the Lord who brought you out from earth to give you this land to possess. Abram says, how do I know I will possess it? And he wasn't doubting Adonai. He was asking if he would possess it. The Torah says in Genesis 12, 7, Adonai appeared to Abram and said, to your descendants, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to Adonai who had appeared to him. Abraham accepted Yahweh's answer and he worshipped him. Worshipped him. You know, when you worship God, you also get comfort and peace. And that is shalom. And then Genesis 15, 18 says, The day Adonai made a covenant with Abraham, I have given this land to your descendants from the river of Egypt to the greater river, the Euphrates River. And you know, if you know this, the Euphrates River flows from the Garden of Eden, Genesis 2.10. The land that is promised has the river Euphrates flown from it, none other than the Garden of Eden. Hallelujah, the place of Yahweh. So Adonai expands on the unconditional promise with Abraham on the day he made the covenant with Abraham, Genesis 17, 8. He tells him all about his descendants, and then he says, I will give you and your descendants after you the land in which you are now foreigners. All the land of the Canaan, Canaan um, and it's a, 
It is a permanent possession. And I will be their God. So he's talking about the eternal promised land. Abraham would possess the eternal promised land by faith. The covenant Yeshua had made with Abraham. Just like we will possess the permanent, hallelujah, the permanent promised land. Hallelujah. Because it's our inheritance. So the glory, hallelujah, of the Lord is going to be greater than the old. The new Jerusalem will be greater than the former. Hebrews 11, 10. For he looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Adonai makes a covenant with Abraham through the coming cross, through the coming Messiah. Genesis 15, 7 through 20. Abraham says, how will I know I will possess it? God tells Abraham, we just read about the sacrifices. God tells Abraham, bring him the animal sacrifices. That was a foreshadow of Yeshua, the sacrifice lamb, lamb of God, that sealed the covenant promises in his redemptive, that he sealed at Yeshua when he came in his redemptive blood. Not blood of animals, but the precious blood of Yeshua, the only begotten Son of God. The covenant was forever. Yeshua said, it is finished, it's done. So our part is to be partakers in agreement with Father, loving him, amen, uh, being obedient to him, so that we can also partake in the great covenant that is passed down to us. So God walked, you know, during the animal uh, parts, when Abraham brought the sacrifice, God walked alone through the blood of the sacrificed animals. Yeshua alone died on the cross. God did it for us. Hallelujah. He did it for us that his blood was his covenant forever. And we are to crucify our flesh, dying to self. And by faith in works of obedience, looking toward the faith that we have, looking forward in faith that we will possess the eternal promised land. Through the covenant sacrifice, Yeshua, the Lamb of God. So like Abraham, we look for a city with head which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Amen. We have that covenant in him. So Abraham, by faith, also looked toward, he also looked towards the land on earth that his offspring would inherit. He didn't see that, but he counted God faithful. By faith and action, he looked forward to the future of the coming Messiah. There's promises that we have in God's covenant. We may not see it, but we walk by faith. We believe it. We, we receive it by faith. Just as we look in faith to the cross in what Yeshua did for us, by faith, we look forward to the returning of Messiah. Just like Abraham looked forward to the coming of the Messiah. He looked forward to the new Jerusalem, to that city. So when we open our heart's door and ask that she would come in and we're born again into a new life, we are not the same person we used to be. The old man passes away and all things become new. We walk like him, we talk like him, we do the works of Yeshua. We are a doer of his word. We are in covenant with Yeshua. So a biblical covenant is a binding agreement, a pledge, a spiritual agreement. A covenant cannot be breached even if one party breaches the covenant because Yeshua did this himself. We said yes and we, we have to follow what he says. We have to obey him, love him. But the covenant remains intact. It's a promise. Yeshua made a spiritual, eternal covenant with humanity. Yeshua alone again, alone died on the cross, shedding his blood for man, making atonement for us. It is a pledge to us, a binding promise. See, man could not keep his promise to the Holy God, so God again intervened for us, showing us his love. Psalms 89, 34, my covenant I will not violate, nor will I utter the utter, alter the utterance of my lips. So see, God will not violate his covenant with us 
It is the man that must be a doer in faith, believing and receiving the covenant of God, walking in his laws. And also a contract is a legal binding agreement to do or not to do something. It often includes penalties. Contracts are agreements enforced by law with both parties understanding. In other words, God says, in this contract he gives us, if we uh, give our, our hearts to him and so forth, he says, I will protect you if you keep my laws and if you are faithful. And it's only common sense. If we don't keep his laws and we don't keep what he said to keep, and you know we break it, then we're walking away from him and we're going to end up giving somebody else legal rights. We break the legal rights that we've given to God. So somebody else has those legal rights. And guess who that is? Yeah. There's only two. <laughs> Hallelujah. So some people don't really understand how dangerous it is making deals and contracts with the wrong people, how that can be. So if that's bad to make uh, deals with wrong people and signing contracts with the wrong people, how much worse is it to make a contract or a, a covenant and a deal with the devil? How much worse? And the only way that that can be broken is through the blood of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you, Father. Um, I don't know if you heard of um, ex -Satan, Satanist uh, high priest uh, John Ramirez, but if you haven't, he used to be an ex priest for Satan, and he'll tell you he had these contracts to do certain things, and um, of course they willed a deal and got money from people uh, doing all kinds of weird things and spells. This stuff is true. This trust stuff is true. I want to read you a article that, um, I hope I can find it here, an article that Levon, uh, Anton LeVay, um, he wrote in his cell. Um, let's see. Okay. It was in the newspaper. Let's see. Okay, I just recently read this article on Halloween, and I did a write up on it. Israel, it was in Israel uh, 365 News, and it was October 11th, 2021, by Adam and Yuhav Berkotsky. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, the title of his, of his um, article was Church of Satan Founder. Glad Christian parents let their kids celebrate Halloween to worship the devil. The Church of Satan, the first organized church in modern times to be devoted to the figure of Satan, perceived Halloween as an opportunity for the average American to indulge in secret Satanist fantasies. They claim that Halloween is the night when the mundane folk try to reach down inside and touch the darkness, which for sat satanic people, is a daily mode of existence. This ain't all. He goes on to say, by dressing and costume, the average American is taking a brief dip into the pool of the shadow world. There was an interview with Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan, and I think probably a lot are familiar with him. Before he passed away in 1997, it noted that Satanists are faithful for the hidden connection to Halloween. Huh. And he says, I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the whole year. LeVay said in an article, Destiny Image, welcome to Halloween. We think because, and he tells the people, we think because we are not performing any demonic rituals or human sacrifices, that we are on the safe ground. He wrote, but do you know, as soon as you dress up, whether you color yourself or put on a costume, the enemy owns you. By doing so, you have turned over your legal rights and you have dedicated yourself and your children to celebrating the devil's holiday. We have just made a pact 
You have just made a pact with the enemy, and you are already sacrificing your children spiritually by dressing them up and changing their identity. These are the words of the founder of the Satan Church. I'm, I'm, these are not my words. These are people that he founded the Satan Church. He knows what goes on behind the, the dark side. And so, I mean, you know, you can, you do what you want to do. Nobody's going to force you to do anything. God won't even force you to do anything. But there's a big warning there. I mean, we allow this stuff to go on because we don't know history or we decide we don't want to believe it and we don't think nothing to happen. But you see later on, there's a, there's a lot of things that um, happen through this ritual. It's Satan's day. There's got to be things. Let me tell you, there's been stories that, that I heard even in my family back in the day. My brother had a, uh, somebody gave him an uh, apple. There was a razor blade in it, and he was going to bite into it. But and then my nephew had something happen. There was dope in the camp. There's all kinds of things that's going on. It's not an innocent holiday. It's not a holiday. It's the Satanist holiday. How, do you know how many real rituals are going on? These people aren't playing games. And John Ramirez said, you play with the devil. He said, he's playing for keeps. We think we're not. We think we're getting away with everything. I know a lot of people probably won't want to hear this, but it's a warning from God. You have to separate yourself from these things. These things are going on and you don't understand what's going on. It's there. It's dangerous. People make a pact with the enemy and then he owns them and you can't get away from him. Then he starts tormenting you. And then, you know, at first it seems okay. Yeah, I can put a love potion on somebody to, to love me. That's what they do. And then after a while, if you don't keep what John Ramirez was saying, he used to put love potions on people because a man wanted this woman. And um, he goes, if you don't keep that going and keep going to them, then somebody dies. Somebody dies. The only way that it can be broke off is through the blood of Yeshua. By changing your heart, by, you know, God breaking that, that covenant, that promise. I mean, this is, I don't know why I'm getting into this, but there's also, he was talk, telling how he, he got out of his body. What is that? Um, astro projection, projecting, and he said he could go into the towns, and if he can get into the towns, he can get into the people. He said there was only two Christian people in all the time that he was serving Satan that could fight him. They couldn't fight him and stop him from doing evil work. See, he would come in. He would even take in the shape of an animal and come into your house and cause things to happen. In a Christian's house, a person who called himself a Christian because there was no foundation. They wanted to have lust of the flesh, you know, lust of the flesh. And Satan will take advantage of it. And all along in the spiritual realm, there's something going on. There's something going on, and unless you have the Spirit of God, you're not going to be able to detect it. He's deceiving. Look at how he deceived Eve. He's deceiving. And he's out to kill you. He's not out to have fun. He's out to kill you. So we need to have a covenant with Yeshua. Remember the 40 days Yeshua went into the wilderness. Satan even tried to make a deal with Yeshua. Bow down and I'll give you all this. He didn't even own it. He was deceived, trying to deceive him. Make these stones turn to bread. She said, "There's more than than uh, the word of God. The, there's more than the bread physically. The life is the word. Amen. Life is the word. Life is in the word. The bread of life. Men shall not eat by bread alone. Amen. But the word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God." Thank you, Father. So we have to be in faith and trust God. We have to be doers. That's the thing. He tells us over and over. We don't understand. We have to be doers if we want to possess what God's given us. Sometimes, you know, I know a lot of, sometimes back then, a lot of it was a hard way. I wanted my way. You learned the hard way. Why, God? Why is nothing happening? Why is this only happening to me? Nobody else. I'm crying. I'm fasting. I'm praying. 
He said, be of your word. It's dead. We're dead. We're dead, it says. Until you are a doer, then it comes alive in you. Your faith will come alive in you. His word comes alive in you. And we can do the works that he tells us to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Yeshua. So we have to have faith in God, amen? Uh -huh. And don't give up. He said, the latter is better than the, the first. And as we continue keeping our walk with the Lord, and we're supposed to be going from glory to glory, not staying the same. If you stay the same, you're going to end up falling back. we got to move forward. Go, he said. Go forward. Don't back up, but go forward. Hallelujah. Now, I... I'm sure, I know most of us here has, have witnessed people being freed from demonic spirits. This is true. And there is nothing and no power greater than the power of God. Amen. No power greater than the power of God. It says the demons even hear the name of Jesus and they tremble. They have to bow down to him. So if we carry the Holy Spirit in us, we have the right, the legal right, amen, to bring forth God's word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So I, I just, you know, ask the parents and aunts, uncles, grandparents, whoever, really pray about this Halloween thing. And it taught, you know, a lot of uh, churches say, we're going to have a harvest. And I'm um, quoting um, John Ramirez said, you know, the, the church is saying, well, we're going to have a fall harvest. What's a fall harvest? Harvest is about souls. What's going on out there? What kind of souls are you getting? A harvest soul. What is that? From Halloween. God says the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. So that could turn around just a little bit. I mean, we should be going out and harvesting for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Well, let's just uh, stand and let's pray and thank God that his word is true and he's he's teaching us his way, amen. It's not to hurt us or to stop us or to think that we're not having any fun. Because there's plenty of fun in the Lord, amen. And there's so much joy and peace in the Lord. You know, there's a, another covenant that I read I was thinking about today. We're talking about having a covenant with God, his blood, amen. But I believe it was Job. He said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Hallelujah. I made a covenant with my eyes. That means you make a covenant with your eyes not to look at things you're not supposed to look at. Because the Bible says when you look at a woman, when you look, you're lusting after it. It's as you already committed the sin. Make a covenant with your eyes. And then we can do that with our mouth too. What we speak, the word of God. So let's go ahead and just um, ask God to work in our life, amen? Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Hallelujah, Yeshua. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for opening our eyes, Lord God, and our ears to what you're saying. Open our heart to receive, Lord God, what you're saying. Lord, you said this is the new covenant, the blood that you shed for us, Father God, that you would give us a heart of flesh, not of stone. Lord God, we thank you that you circumcise that heart right now, Father. Hallelujah, you circumcise it, Lord God. Take all that stuff away, Father. Take it away, Lord God. We desire a life with you, Lord God. A true love, a true shalom. A true shalom in you, Father God. A hope in you, Lord. Something better than what's going on here, Lord God. And that is with you, Father. <clears throat> Thank you, Father, for your uh, teaching us and leading us, Father God. Help us to be the doers. Help us to crucify our flesh. And when we say yes, we are acting on it, Lord God. And not to try to uh, turn it around to something we think or what we say. We need to line it up with your word and what you say if we want victory. If we want victory and deliverance in our lives, we've got to line up what we're saying with your word, Father. To be doers that we are not dead, but we are alive in you. You said we were once dead in our trespasses and sins, but we are alive in you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for those
those that are watching and those that are here right now, Father God. Lord, that you move upon our hearts, Lord God. To have a desire to be more like you, Lord. To care, Lord God. To have compassion, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to be doers and get on our knees, Lord God, and pray. Help us to be doers and get out your word and study and seek you, Lord God. For you said, if you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Lord God, we thank you that we can be doers here in this world that what you told us to do, Father, we will do. And any sin that is act against you, that is sin. Anything that's against uh, holiness, anything that's against your word, that's a sin. It doesn't even matter if it's, a, if it's a good thing that we do. If it's not according to your word, then it's against you. Hallelujah. Lord God, we pray for protection, Lord God, during this time. During this time, Lord God, of what's going on, where evil is so prevalent and there's no shame. It's bringing out and bringing out, Lord God. Help your people, us, Lord God, to stand up, Lord God, and be uh, persistent, Lord God, and to stand against the walls of the enemy. Lord God, help us, Lord God, that we are not uh, cowardly, Lord, but we stand on your word that no demon can scare us. No demon can stop us because you're the Holy Spirit. You're the powerful God. Hallelujah, Father. And Lord, we pray for our family. We pray for our friends, Lord God, right now. Lord, that you would help them to understand, Lord God, what you're doing and what you're saying is for our own good. Help us, Lord, to be doers. Help us, Lord, to have faith with works in our obedience in you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Worship you, Father. Lynette, please come to the camp. We need to just thank him. I know it's, you know, a lot of times people work all day and they're tired, but we come here to worship the Lord. So let's let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit move on you. If you're at home and you just got home from work and you feel tired, but you want God, you want, you desire him, let his Holy Spirit move upon you right now. Just worship him. Worship him. You may have fell away from the Lord at one time. You may be a prodigal. But when you worship him and come back to him, the latter will be greater than the first. We can't live off of the old past where that day we got saved, that day we got filled, we felt the power of the Holy Spirit. We should be getting renewed every day. Renewed, hallelujah. Renewed, hallelujah, in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, 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 let's worship. Hallelujah, the anointing breaks yokes and breaks bondages. Hallelujah, 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 Father. And Lord, we go out from here, Lord God, that you stay in our hearts and our minds. That your protection is upon us, Lord.
demonic activity. And if the demonic activity will fear them because they speak and speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Isa Aranai Pana 
the very top of our feed at Facebook on our Facebook page that has the conference call number or you can click on the URL and that will actually launch and you can join by Wi-Fi. We actually recommend if possible you join by Wi-Fi you get the best sound experience um, and you won't, uh, sometimes where your phone line does drop and if that's all you got, there's an option there as well. As always, uh, right here at, at BethelTempleFellowship.org you can donate to this ministry by clicking on Donate at the very top, and that will take you to a page where we accept a couple of forms of electronic ways that you can give to support the ministry. It keeps the doors open, makes this live stream possible, and helps us with our feasts and, and the teachings that we do to bring the message of Yeshua to the masses. Amen? And also, I just wanted to remind you that we are just a little over 50 days away from our celebration of Hanukkah. Now, Hanukkah actually begins on, uh, I believe it's Sunday, November 28th. That's the first night. But we're going to celebrate it on the 4th. So if you are needing a Hanukkah, a menorah, or you are needing candles for your Hanukkah, I would highly recommend that right now is the time to go ahead and start ordering those due to some of the national supply chain issues. Uh, there's a bunch of different websites that you can order online or if there is a store near you that you can walk in and pick them up, obviously do that. But I will get those soon um, in case they do run out. So again, December 4th, 2021, 5 p.m. We have all this information on our website at BethelTempleFellowship.org. Thank you so much for uh, your support. God bless you. I forgot one other thing. Uh, when you give to Bethel Temple Fellowship, as Rabbi was stating earlier, we are excited to see some of the renovations that they are doing on the synagogue building itself. Uh, that is actually owned by the um, Excelsior uh, Foundation. So when you give to Bethel Temple Fellowship, you're actually supporting uh, the ministry here within our congregation, and those monies are used here for, uh, again, spreading the gospel, taking care of uh, all the expenses of running the ministry. Uh, there are donations that are being gathered for the Senate, uh, for the renovation projects themselves, but that actually is with a different organization. So if you see those two online, there's a distinction there. God bless you. Amen. And also, if anybody here wants to give an offering, uh, see Pastor Bob. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, and remember, Hanukkah is the time of uh, dedication, so it's a good time to prepare yourself now, and then when Hanukkah comes, dedicate yourself again to the Lord. Amen. The cleansing of our temple and so forth teaches us. Thank you, Father. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Tell them that we care.